Welcome to the Woman Who Makes Things Happen show. My name is Agnes van Rijn and I'm a holistic business mentor to professional women who want to reach their full potential in life and in business, but without giving up who they are and what is important to them. I'm also the founder and the host of the Woman Who Makes Things Happen show, and today it's my privilege to be interviewing Placida Hasheru. Placida is the founder of Unleashed Women's Network and coaching uh, for its excellence. She is a top UK business transformation coach and mentor. She's also four times international best-selling author, and she launched a fifth international best-selling book in January 2017 called Love Unboxed. Placida helps her clients develop the confidence to share their story in a book, positioning themselves as the go-to expert. She's dedicated to guiding others toward taking charge of their lives, breaking through roadblocks to systematically transform their everyday into the power to create wealth. Welcome to the Woman Who Makes Things Happen show, Placida. How are you? Thank you so much. Um, I'm very well, thank you, and yes, thank you for inviting me. I I'm, so uh, I'm, I'm so pleased to have you. You and I have known each other almost since I arrived in the UK. Yes. I, was, I was thinking this morning, when, when, where did we met? But now I remember, it was at a uh, Women Speakers Association uh, networking event. Yes. Um, and that was, yeah, I, I was only in the UK for a few months when uh, when you and I met. And yes. yeah, our paths have crossed regularly. You also invited me uh, at some point at one of your um, uh, workshops that Vision you do. Workshop. Yeah. Visioning, etc. Yeah, yeah, no, amazing. So I'm very pleased to have you. So yeah. obviously I know a bit more about you, but the viewers don't. So tell us, tell us about you. Wow, you know, um, I'd like to let people know that I was an administrator for 12 years. And um, even though I was doing that job, I had a lovely house, everything seemed good. Something inside of me felt like there was more to me. There's something more to me, you know, and I needed to find that more, but I didn't know what it was. So I came from my country, Nigeria, to the UK to rest for um, three months without thinking about business. I love business also, I like to make money. And um, I said, I'm not gonna think about business, I'm just gonna find myself, just relax mm -hmm. and see what comes. And then in a conversation, someone told me about coaching. And that was it. When I heard it, I was like, oh my God, that oh, is this is me, where have I been, where have I been? So um, I went back home, packed up everything. I had three retail shops alongside my job. And I just packed up, didn't tell my friends, didn't tell anybody, and came back to the UK to study coaching. And that's my journey. And that's where I am now today. No regrets. But what he was doing it was scary. Like, oh my God. I remember on the plane, on the plane, I was like, oh my God. I'm doing the right thing. I've just abandoned everything, friends and everything I was doing and came to start my life afresh from scratch. And um, it's the best decision I made. How long, ago, how long ago was that, Placida? This is exactly 10 years this month. 10 years? Oh, this month. <laughs> so an anniversary. Wow. Yes. Wow. Yeah, so to that extent, although the reasons were different, we share a similar start because I also arrived with absolutely nothing, left everything behind. And although I hadn't much left, but at least I had the family, the friends, etc., and I just went. Um, and so it's interesting that at some point we are capable, uh, if we know how to bypass the fear, um, to just follow our intuition and our faith into this is going to happen and what is interesting is you did it um but you did mention that you did ask yourself oh my god what am i doing uh, it's not because we follow our face that it means that um we don't have moments where we doubt of course oh, we do yeah <laughs> we do and especially because i wasn't young i was 38 so now you've calculated my age <laughs> and you know how old i am no, <laughs> you know, so I was 38 and it was a crazy thing because I had built this secured place, environment for myself, a lovely home. Um, I used to do trips to UK, Dubai, and back, in, you know, alongside my job. And um, I had to just abandon everything. You know, it's like everything I've ever known just 
drop it and start again, like finding me. Mm-hmm. And I like the new me. Really, absolutely <laughs> love the new me. me. <laughs> so talking about age, I was 58. Oh <laughs> so, my God. So there is, it, it's very interesting. And, and the reason I'm saying it is, uh, and, and the common thing we have is, is sharing stories, obviously, um, is that a lot of people think it's too late. So you're already saying, I did it at 38. I left everything behind. I did it at 58. I left everything behind. And it is never too late when you want to reinvent yeah. yourself. It is never too late the other thing that i like in what you're saying a lot of people at some point go through this phase that they think there must be more to life but what i in this what, what i like about what you're saying you're not saying there must be more to life you say there must be more to me so it really was about you and 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 stepping back into owning your life in fact and 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 who you are and what your potential is what you can reach with it yeah. And my God, you did well. So tell us. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, it, it, you know, I started off being a coach, which is where everyone starts. You know, we start off as, you know, I want to be a coach. But then you evolve. So when I came, you know, all my life, I like to help people. You know, in church, I used to be in charge of choir, you know, like big, massive church. I just love helping people. And so when I did my coaching training, I had to choose and find a niche. You know, and that word was such a strange word to me at the time. I had not heard it. Like, what are you guys talking about? Why can't I help everybody? He said, no, you've got to niche yourself. And I know I love making money. I love helping people make money because I think people should have a comfortable life, be happy, you know, have a nice lifestyle, the one that they desire. So, and then, then I like to help people in their love life. In their, you know, people come to me for everything. So <laughs> how do I find a niche that is good? But anyway, I started up as a personal and business coach. So I decided to merge both of them, personal and business coach. And I started off that way. And then along the way, it's, I found I couldn't do both. I needed to actually. So time told me as I practiced my coaching, that I couldn't focus on everyone because people didn't know what to do, how to find me and what I did. So I went into coaching and even the coaching has evolved to what it is today. So over the years, coaching has evolved for me, you know, um, instead of building websites and helping people with their SEO search engine optimization. So that was how I started. And then I was running networking events and from networking events, you know, then I moved into what I'm doing now, which is helping people find themselves, their story, and put it into a book. Mm-hmm. You know, and you know, from that book, they can now begin to build their life and their, their future and their business. But see, our stories are so important. You know, like you shared your story just now, 58, you know. I'm sure if I did that, people would just think I've gone crazy. But see what you're doing, you're doing well. Even for me, my friends, some of my friends didn't talk to me for a while because they just thought I had lost it. Ah. They just abandoned everything mm. and then go start a new life, you know. And money runs out really quickly in this country. So the little money I had and I came in thinking it would be enough for me to fix myself and do stuff, immediately ran out, <laughs> you know. So <laughs> I have to find a way like every other person finds a way when they come into the United Kingdom. So thank you for sharing that. What I really find interesting, it's so important for listeners and viewers to understand that. It is not because at some point you make a certain choice um, that it has to be strictly that one. Uh, I've experienced exactly the same and I see it with my clients all the time. It is a journey and you need to reevaluate as you go, as you work with your clients, what works for you, what works for them, because you will be at your best. And I had that discussion yesterday with a client. You will be at your best when you are working with people you love working with so even if you could of course help everyone well there are certain people that will nourish you that will make you flourish and some others that will drain you so work with the right people they will resonate with you and and that's how they will find you so this whole notion of of niche you just need to get started somewhere yeah and then adapt it as you go exactly so now back to your 
current orientation about helping women share uh, their story in a book. I really love that. Although I know that I have a story in me, definitely, but um, I'm not so much into writing. So I don't know when that book will come out. I know it will. We, but... can, we can fix that. We can fix <laughs> <Yeah>. that. <laughs> But um, I recently uh, also um, interviewed um, uh, Harriet Kataba. Uh, oh, and, and men I mentioned her to you yesterday. Absolutely need to put you in touch with her. She's amazing. And, and she's doing something called Her Story Matters. Um, and it's exactly that. It is women need to share their story. And in particular, I believe, because women tend to believe that whatever happens to them, they're on the only one experiencing that. But if they start sharing their story, which is why I always share mine so easily, they start realizing that they're not the only one. So you must, you must find things that are amazing in those stories. Absolutely amazing. And I'll tell you how I evolved to do that. My, my life isn't as simple as I just packed up and left. Wow. I have just come out of a divorce and it was not a very good one. Plus... I had health issues, you know, I had lots of rejections in my life, you know. And so when I go to speak at events and I share bits of my story, because, you know, even at 38, you have a lot going on. If you can't share your whole life. So when I share a bit of my story, people are like, wow, you mean you've gone through that? You know, this has happened to you. And then after I've gone to, after, after the event, people will come to me at the back and they might say, I think you need to meet somebody, you know. Um, my daughter has sickle cell. I know somebody who's got sickle cell and, um, you know, she'll be inspired by you. You're such an inspiration. And I saw the power of talking about the part of my life that I didn't think I should share. Because when you're going through your pain, sometimes you feel ashamed. I felt ashamed. I felt, mm -hmm. you know, am I not good enough? Am I not, doing the right, am I not doing the right things? I'm sure I'm doing the right things. I'm a smart woman. But well, why are things not working out the way that they should work? And so I felt ashamed at some point in my life. And then when I went to all these events and people would come back to me and say, you inspired me. I heard you over the radio show and I get emails. And I said, I heard you on the TV. You know, could you mentor me? I'm going through this. And I said, you know, I can't be ashamed of my story. I need to share it more because it is healing oh, lives. Sorry. It is transforming lives. And so that's how... I gradually evolved to anthologies, bringing a collection of women to share their story in a book, especially women who have never written. Because some of the women, their stories are so powerful, they've never written, and they're like, Justin, I'm not sure I can do this. I've never written anything. I said, don't worry. We would make your story sound fantastic. And we don't dilute their story. We, don't, we keep it as raw. We mm -hmm. just make the grammar and the English and the commas you know, to be good. But we keep their stories very, very raw. So the book you mentioned, The Love Unboxed, which became my international best-selling book, the stories are real. You know, even when I was compiling those, that's, those stories, good pimples, you know, some of the stories were like shivers on my, on my body. And you think you've gone through something and you're the only one, like you said. You read somebody else's story and like, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> How did she do it? You know? And these women have been there and they're here now and they're moving their life we have one lady who presently is going through a divorce and when she submitted when she talked to me about her story i said are you sure you're ready she said yes i want other women to know how i came to this point that i'm you know desiring a divorce from my That's husband that. you know and then she sent her story in it's you know it's sad but we've got fantastic reviews and response because these women were open, raw, real. And trust me, it wasn't easy. No, yeah, no, no, definitely not. You need, to, you need to be, I would say, to a certain extent, a bit, a bit advanced in your own healing process before yeah. you, can, you can actually um, share uh, with others. 
um, it's not it's not always easy. But uh, but as you say, I, I mean, I see it with this show. I, I've you are episode what is it one hundred and six if I remember well. Yes. Um, so so you can't imagine how many. Well, you can imagine one hundred and six stories that I've heard, um, and it's it is just incredible. But it's so inspiring for others, and and that's why. So it's not only about ourselves. It's 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 for others. It's for others, it's for the younger generation, you know, it's for, it's leaving a legacy. So even after you're gone, lives will still be transformed, mm. you know, and that brings me to another part of my story. I've got so much inside of me. <laughs> I was in a coma in 2015 and I woke up in January the 6th and I was told I'd been in a coma for 24 days. Mm. That's incredible. And it hit me. When I began to gain consciousness, when you come out of coma, you know, the whole world is strange. For me, that's how I felt. I felt everything was new. Everyone was weird. Why are they smiling? Why are they, you know, everything just didn't look, looked funny to me. So I kept smiling all the time. And but when I began to gain my consciousness and become human again, so when I use the word human again, people laugh. So I said, oh my God, that would have been it. I would have died. I would have been, I would have gone. And have I really impacted the world the way I would, you know, I'm supposed to have impacted the world. Mm -hmm. And so I've been thinking about doing, you know, helping women put their stories together, but have not done it. I've been focusing on other aspects of my business. So when this thing happened to me, I said, no more holding back. Yeah. No more holding back. And so I, I put this collection and the transformation, even for myself, is absolutely amazing. You know, the power of just one book. Mm. And yes, the power of one book and people sharing, healing for myself. You know, there are things that I had to, like I was writing, even for myself as the compiler, healing was taking place inside of me. Yeah. I was just finding yeah. myself. We always learn from others as well, even when we are the one mentoring them. Yeah, no, absolutely, absolutely. But by the way, don't get me wrong, I did uh, participate into, uh, what is it, four anthologies. Uh, what I'm talking about is writing my own book completely. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, wow, that must have been quite an experience indeed to, uh, to go through a coma like that and then... Um, uh, yeah, it puts things in perspective and you start looking at things differently. I've been using it quite often in this interview, but I keep uh, interview series, but I keep saying it again and again. I always love what uh, Brendan Burchard says. He says, at the end of your life, there is only the answer to three questions that is important. Did you live? Did you love? And did you matter? So even yeah. if you've mattered for just one person, yeah, uh, it makes all the difference. Yes. Yeah, yeah, so, absolutely. Uh, Placida, I'm I'm conscious of time. Uh, if you were to give a few tips to women who want to go after the dream or to or want to reinvent themselves, what would you say? I would say to that lady, and I'm looking into your eyes now. If you're watching this, and I'm saying to you, do not hold back. You know, it doesn't matter how the thought is so scary because the thought will be scary. So do not hold back. If you think it is too scary for you to think about, talk to someone. There are so many coaches out there. and Even if they are not tagged as a coach, there are people who are natural mm -hmm. at listening and supporting you. Talk to somebody about this thing that you're thinking about. Well, you see, you only live once. You know, you might, you know, you don't have to die and be in a coma. So for me, I feel like I have two lives now because I've died and, <laughs> and I've come back. But <laughs> you don't have to go in a coma and come back before you begin to step out and be you. The thing is, there are women who are all over the world who need what is inside of you. And your entire life experience would save a life. Your entire life experience, the school, the life school you've been through, could transform a life, could change a life. So if you hold back, you're actually robbing somebody mm. of their potential future. That's because, such a good one. Yes, because they are waiting for you. You are the one. You know, we, the, the world is full of how many billion people in the world? 
Oh my God. And yes, is reaching out to people through this media. I am doing mine through this media. There are people I would meet that Agnes would never meet. There are people that you would meet yeah. that I and Agnes would never meet. Mm. So your life and your words, everything about you is a solution to somebody else. So don't rob them. Ah, I love it. Yeah, yeah who, who, who are you? Do not wanting to give it to them. <laughs> <laughs> to exactly. a, a, in a way yeah no absolutely so uh Placida, where can people find you easy way to find me is my name.com so placida acheru.com i'm also on social media where i hang out a lot on facebook so you can reach me on facebook which is also my name.com if you're thinking about you know sharing your story you can you know go to bookprojects.com you know and find me but it's so easy do a Google search and put Placida Acheru. I'm there for you. Thank you so much, Placida. I've really enjoyed uh, this interview with you, and I always love your smile. You're always a smile. A <laughs> Thank you. A Thank you. Uh, so, um, for the viewers and the listeners, if you two uh, would want to either go after a dream that you've always had, or you want to reinvent your life, like a Placida did like I did. Uh, you can uh, book a discovery compliment, sorry, a complimentary discovery consultation with me on my website directly, and that is www.agnesvanrijn.com. A N Y E S V A N R H I J N dot com. Have a wonderful day, Placida, and uh, see you, the viewers, in the next interview. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.